Greetings, friends. Mark here, and welcome to a very special edition of Look, It's Rock and Roll. Uh, I'm going to be flying solo today, and we're going to be taking a look at a recent release that came out. Um, those of you who know me and follow me on the KISS FAQ podcast probably know that I'm not only a big KISS collector, but I'm also a very big David Bowie collector. And uh, in on June, pardon me, on June 19th of this year, uh, Parlophone Records released a special picture disc version of one of David Bowie's records, which was Space Oddity, which is this record here. Now, I'm not a, the biggest collector of picture discs, but I am a big David Bowie collector, so of course I have to be a completist and get this. Um, what's interesting that I find right off the bat about this is that they chose to uh, reissue the 76 or 70 they say it's 72 uh, but there's some people say 76 some people say 72 a uh, year reissue of this record because the original album cover pardon me the original album cover was not like this the original album cover looked like this here it was like this this was the original album cover of this record, which is simply known as David Bowie Space Oddity, but there was also another version of this album cover, which I'll get to shortly. There are in fact three album covers. There's that one I showed you, the one that's on the picture disc here, and there's another one which I'll show you after as well. Now. The interesting part about this, and I'll read you some information about this for those of you who are maybe interested in this. Um, this is a this was supposed to come out originally on April 17th, 2020, the day before the record store day for 2020. Now, record store day, as we know, was canceled or held back due to the coronavirus crisis. Now, this is a limited edition picture disc replicating. See, they have here the 1972 RCA edition of Space Oddity. The disc features the Mick Rock shots that were used on the front and the back of the original sleeve. They're talking about this picture too. Uh, albeit in much better quality due to him supplying new negatives, new scans of the negatives. The pictures were taken at Bowie's then home, Haddon Hall, in the spring of 1972. The album comes with a replica of the cover image poster, which is a part of the package at the time. The back sleeve image was taken in Zoe Bowie, which is actually Duncan Jones' pink bedroom, along with The Man Who Sold the World. The November 1972 edition of Space Oddity was repackaged for the new Bowie audience to make available to make available the increasingly hard to find Phillips and Mercury original copies of this record. The picture disc, now here's the interesting part. This picture disc features the 2009 40th anniversary remaster of the album, which was undertaken to match as closely as possible to the original vinyl issue. Now, I find that very interesting for many, many reasons, because um, as I'll show you here, because I'm going to go through some other versions of this record. Remember, they said 2009 version uh, was the re the re the 2009 remaster was what this is just picture disc form okay now the 2009 if you do your calculation correctly is the 40th anniversary of this record now I have some different versions of this record oh but before we get to that let me just quickly show you this in a little bit more detail so inside it comes with a lyric sheet and credits. It might be a little hard to see. Um, here is the picture disc. I'll, I'll take it out just to show you I'm a good guy. I'll take it out. There's side A. And when you flip it, the image in the back 
is that image is there. Now, the poster they're talking about, I will show you here as well. This here is the poster. Now this apparently came with the original version of this record back in 69. There you go. Now when I first uh, went to the store to get this, um, I, I for one didn't even know that this was out because uh, like many of us, you know, we were all, you know, in, I'm not going to say in hiding, but we were, you know, in quarantine because of Corona. So I hadn't gone to a record store in quite a while. Just back in there. Okay, great. But of course, when I went to the store and I saw this, the thing that immediately caught me was that sticker there saying poster. Because I do remember in all my collecting days here that that was part of the original package. Now, I'll show you some of these other ones and we'll make a comparison discuss about it. This here is my 1972 Canadian reissue Space Oddity. Now, according to Discogs, it claims that this is a 1976 version of it, which is, I guess, possible. It could have reissued it a few times. It's on the tan label, which obviously makes it um, a reissue because the orange labels were the technically regarded as the first versions of these records. Uh, on the back, it's no different than the, the picture disc. It has the exact same thing, except you know, it has RCA at the bottom here, and it has more Canadian information. If you look at the top corner there, you'll see that little white maple leaf depicting a Canadian pressing of this record. Now, this record sounds really good, even though it is on Dynaflex. Some people don't like those Dynaflex pressings. Now, the next version of the record that I have on vinyl, and I have a few other versions of this, so I'll show those as well, uh, besides vinyl. Uh, this is the, the one in question. This is the 2009 40th anniversary pressing. You'll see on that sticker. Let's see if I can do this better somehow. It says 40th anniversary edition there. And uh, that is the original version of it. Now, what's interesting is that when they redid the labels for it, the center labels, they used the sort of Philips style, Philips Records style uh, labels for this. So when it came out on Philips Records in the UK, it had labels like that. Of course, not with Bowie on it. It would say, would have said Philips Records on it, which is rather interesting. I'm just looking at if there's anything on the dead wax to make note of. No, not really. Um, and this is a gatefold. Let me just pull up that out here. Yeah. You'll see here's the gatefold. With the lyrics and stuff inside. Sorry, let me see if I can just square that up a bit better. There we go. Now, it's been a while since I've seen this, so I don't know if there's anything else of interest in there. Oh, yes, there is. How about that? There is a poster in this version and a rather large one at that, if memory serves me correctly now. Oh, boy. Okay, let's see if I can get this in shot. So it's rather a rather large sort of uh, poster for some sort of event that David Bowie did. I didn't get a good glimpse of it there or what it said, but I guess I, when I watch back the footage, I will be able to see it. Uh, here is the inter inner sleeve that comes with it, the printed version of it. Now these were done very well uh, as far as quality of printing and stuff like that. These inner sleeves are very well done. They, they're very sturdy. Uh, 
and uh, the, the records themselves are, are really good as well. I don't know why this is not going on. There we go. Going back in properly. I'll just put that aside here for now. But yeah, the sound quality of that is absolutely fantastic. That sounds very good. They, they did claim to use the original uh, vinyl, the original analog masters for the vinyl of this. Uh, so if that is the case, then that would, that would attest to why it sounds so fantastic. Now, why I was confused why the picture disc used that version of it, because, you know, when you're making product, you probably want to go as new as possible and get the newest things happening. There is a release that came out uh, last year of the same record. Does this look familiar? This is David Bowie's Space Oddity, and according to the hype label, it is the 50th anniversary and a special remix of the whole album. Not just a remaster, a remix by Tony Visconti, the original man who mixed this record. Now, when you take it out of here, out of this, it comes out of this die cut sleeve here. The record looks essentially exactly the same as the other one. Now, just on the back of the die cut, they have the titles of the songs here. And there you have the sort of image in there. And when you open it, it's the sort of the same, but there's some slight variations. You notice there's no big David Bowie written on it in here. And of course the information uh, as far as who did what in the production has changed as well. Uh, here is the vinyl. Now again, people who know me know that I'm absolutely livid when I see that they put such beautiful made records in these really shitty paper sleeves. I mean, look at like that's going to scratch the hell out of this. Okay. Now they went back again and uh, used the original sort of Phillips labels for this. Sorry. I'm getting all disoriented there. Okay. Uh, I think the dead wax information is nothing really to speak of. It's just uh, more serial number stuff. Sometimes they did put, do they do put in people who work on it as far as the mastering and the lacquer cutting on here, uh, but it's not on here. There doesn't seem to be anything else as far as any kind of poster or anything like that on here for this version. Now, if you give me one second here, I'm going to refer back to my notes for one quick thing. Um, as far as uh, information that might be very uh, useful to this conversation. Now, when we go here uh, to the 2020 version of it, these 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 uh, discs here, the, the picture discs, were pressed at Optimal Media. Now, that's a very good pressing company. Um, there are other pressing companies that I'm leery of. Uh, GZ is one of them in the Czech Republic. I'm kind of a little meh on their, their ones. Uh, and there's also a couple in America that I'm not too hot on. But usually these ones are good. RTI is a good one. Optimal is good. Uh, B M MPO is good. I believe that one is in France. There, there are some very good ones in Europe. Um, so the information here, as I mentioned earlier, I've already read to you. Uh, producer was Tony Visconti. Uh, and it does not say, though, who mastered this. So we will go back and take a look at one little bit of information here. I will go back and check the 2009 information that I have here. Uh, here we go. Just to see if there's any kind of interesting variation. That came out October 19th, 2009. Uh, and those are starting to become more and more difficult to find. Okay, so the remaster was done by Peter Mew. Uh, he did quite a few remasters in that time period, including a lot of the Black Sabbath stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure if this stuff was remastered at Abbey Road, then it was done um, by those guys. Now, here's the interesting thing that I just read here now, for example. Didn't I just say that the notes on here... <clears throat> said that the 2009 was taken from the original analog tapes. 
well, according to here, <clears throat> excuse me, according to here, it says that it's a digital remaster. So what is it? Is it a digital or is it an analog cut? Now, for me personally, if you want an analog cut of it, buy the one I showed you, that Canadian one. Those were, you know for sure those are going to be analog because there was no digital or 1972. So if you're concerned about that end of it, go back to those records and get them. And there are some really good ones, uh, <clears throat> some really good sounding ones, and you can find some of them uh, for a lot cheaper than you think. They're getting higher and higher in price now, even these ones. But if you're lucky and you go to some, you know, mom and pop kind of stores, you might get one for rel relatively cheap. Now, I will show you some other variations of this that I own. Now, here is a cassette version of this album. It was released by EMI in 1990. <clears throat> now, what's interesting is there's a lot of information in this especially for a cassette. Here is that album cover that I was mentioning to you before. The variation cover. Right in the middle there. That David, that says David Bowie. If, you, if I zoom in a bit here, I think it says Man of Music, Man of Sound, or something, something like that. I, I, I forget what it says on here. It says, oh, Man of Words, Man of Music. That was the original title that they had in the alternate version of this record. So that's the alternate album cover that you might see on some of them. If you see this version of the record, the middle picture here, get it. It's pretty valuable. Now, there are some other pictures here from that time period, I guess. And what's interesting is that this has bonus cuts of the song of some songs on here. Now, the ones of note is conversation piece is on here which was produced by Tony Visconti, written by David Bowie. It has David Bowie on vocals. Ted Renwick, who was the second guitar player for Pink Floyd on the uh, Momentary Lapse of Reason tour. Yeah. Uh, John Lodge on bass and John Cambridge on drums. So those were the same guys that played on this record. The uh, Space Oddity. But there's a second... Uh, bonus thing here, Memory of a Free Festival Part 1, Part 2. That has David Bowie on vocals and guitar, Mick Ronson on guitar, Tony Visconti on bass, and Mick Woodmansey or Woody Woodmansey on drums. So there you're already seeing the transition to what would become the Spiders from Mars uh, band already on that song. Now here is the cassette. Interesting to note that instead of the song credits, it says they're all tracks digitally remastered by Dr. Toby, what's his last name there? Toby Mountain. So in 1990, it kind of makes sense that they were kind of hyping up this whole digital thing because it was relatively new at that time still. So, and everybody was thinking, digital, digital, you know, digital sounds great, right? So they were hyping that up then. Now, here is the CD I showed you earlier. Now you're thinking this is the 40th anniversary 2009 version. No, it's not actually. If you take a look, the spine, it's a 2015 remaster. What is the difference in that? I don't believe a whole heck of a lot. Now, let me just see if I can quickly figure that out. Okay, here it says here, they have it listed here as 2014 release for whatever reason. It clearly says it's 2015 and there's nothing really of any sort of note to make it any different. It's just probably yet another remaster of it. Would be nice to know who did the remaster. Sorry, this doesn't seem to be zooming in very nicely. So again, it's sort of a you know version of the Philips stuff. The Philips release, there you go. Uh, it has the The booklet here which shows ironically the other art alternate cover so if you want to be really coy you can just flip the booklet around and you can con confuse people into thinking that you have a different version of the cd there's the uh, credits and of course there's all the you know, the, the, the lyrics and stuff like that for the song 
So that is the 2015 version of the album. And then, of course, is the 20, 2019 uh, version of this record, which has the which is the 50th anniversary, which has the new mix by Tony Visconti. It's basically the same idea as the vinyl in every shape and form. Same thing on the front, same thing on the back. It just has some different sort of things in there, like it has that extra image there. And it has the CD here. Again, the CD is sort of similar to the Philips version of it. There you go. Uh, of note, this is actually the European release version of it. Which is sort of weird. I don't know why our store here wouldn't have had the US one or whatever. Maybe they're probably the same. Okay, and one other piece that I have from this time period, which is very interesting, which I had immediately as a Bowie collector, I had to jump on right away, was this. Now, this is to go in conjunction with the 50th anniversary release of the record. This is the 50th anniversary edition of the single. Let's get that in there properly. Of the seven inch single. Now, it has two versions of this. Both of them have Space Oddity and Wild Eyed Boy from Free Cloud. Now, on the back here, it says. The first one is the original mono single edit, and the B-side is the original mono single version. The second version of it is the 2019 mix single edit and the 2019 mix single version of it. Now, when you open this, if I can get this stupid thing open, come on, there we go. It has the two singles. Let me just take them out here. Let me just take everything out here. So there's the back side of the box. And what you have here is the first single here. This was the original mono. You can tell that by when you flip it, it replicated the Philips label in the top corner. And at the bottom corner there you see Philips. Now, they were smart enough to do uh, anti-static sleeves for this, thank God, because I would have been really annoyed if that happened with such a nice pressing here. There is the 45. This is the mono, as you can see. And there is the other side. Mono, yeah. So there you go. Uh, nothing really of, to speak of as far as on the dead wax end of things. So that was the original version. And this was, this is the reissue version of it, which has the new mix on there. As you can see, it has Parlophone on there and the new different identifications for it. And this has even a totally different style of 45. It doesn't have that type of centerpiece. It has, sorry, I'm rubbing my arm against the microphone there, sorry. Uh, it has a sort of normal 45. And this is, of course, a stereo version of it. The other one was mono. Yes, my fingers are on it. Sorry, I will be re-cleaning this anyway, so don't send me 100 messages. I was touching the vinyl. Okay, so that is the 2019. Now, with this came a couple things like normally these sorts of things do. There is a nice picture that comes with it, a sort of glossy photo that you can frame if you're inclined to do that sort of thing. And there is a sort of an information card that comes with it giving all the information about each version of the song. The musicians who play on it and so on and so forth. 
interesting to note that David Bowie, Mick Wayne on guitar, Herbie Flowers on bass, Rick Wakeman, Rick Wakeman, yes, of Yes fame on Mellotron, Terry Cox on drums, and with a session orchestra. And uh, Wild Eyed Boy from Free Cloud is simply David Bowie on vocals and 12 string, and Paul Buckmeister on Arco bass, whatever that may be. There we go. And this also came with a poster, two sided, I believe. Side one has this. And the other side, I believe, is something a little bit more simpler. Yeah, just a sort of simple image of a space astronaut and David Bowie. So there you go. That is the uh, 50th anniversary singles. Now these sort of uh, these sort of collections that are coming out, these sort of boxes, because there's another one that I have as well, which is called Looking Through the Keyhole, which has some of the early demos. If you find them, get them, if you're a collector of Bowie, because I'm finding that as time is passing, these things are, are starting to increase in price. Um, I believe this was under 50 bucks when I first got it. I think they are approaching over that price and more. So if you are into those kind of things, go ahead and grab it. It, it will be worth it, I think, as a collector. So there are my thoughts on the uh, new release, the picture disc version of the record that came out, and some of my thoughts on the prior pressings of it. So thank you for watching, and uh, please subscribe to this channel, and uh, give us a like. It helps us with getting seen on YouTube for these sorts of things. And I will be back soon, I'm sure, with some more interesting content for you to watch. Thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode. Be sure to subscribe to us, like us, or even leave us a review. You can find us and join the conversation on Facebook. <laughs>